Hey everybody, Dan Strong here with Excel VBA is fun. Today we're going to do another free lesson from our advanced grid course with Excel VBA wherein we're talking about the X grid control, specifically how it functions on a worksheet versus how it works and functions on a user form. Some of the subtleties and some of the differences within. So without further ado, let's dive into the free lesson. We'll see you there. In this lecture, we're going to actually get our hands dirty, meaning we're actually going to get to follow along and start playing around with the grid control. The primary focus of this lecture, and by the way, I just opened up a brand new Excel workbook, so you can work with any of them to just learn this basic practice. But the primary focus of this lecture is how to put a grid on a worksheet versus putting them on a user form. And a few subtleties, there's not a lot of differences between the two. But it's just helpful to plan, hey, I want a grid right here on a worksheet that has some background image and maybe cells or if you want to pop up user form with a grid on it that can easily be closed and kind of uh, swept under the rug if you will or moved away so let me show you how to do that on a worksheet first and if you don't have the developer ribbon we should have already gone over that in a previous lecture or we'll provide a link with how to do how to get the developer ribbon it's really easy but you click on the developer ribbon you're gonna to go to insert and under ActiveX controls, but by default, you only have the button and some of these main ActiveX controls. But on the far lower right hand corner, you have more controls. And now that you have the X grid installed, whether demo or full version, if you click on more controls, you'll see a list of all the different controls that you have on your computer. So you're going to want to press the, the letter E to go down to the EX controls because we want the EX grid. So here's the EX grid ActiveX control. If you hit OK, now it'll let you kind of size where you want your grid to be. So here's my grid one and you can rename it by clicking on it and renaming it here in the names box. But essentially, as long as we're in design mode, we can move it, resize it, etc. If you click away and take it off of design mode, now you have a grid that nothing, there's nothing on it yet. Now let's do the same for a user form. I'm going to hit Alt F11 to go into the Visual Basic Editor. And in this case, we don't have any user forms yet, so I'm going to take this drop down and click on User Form. As you can see, I have a lot of different controls on my toolbox that are beyond the uh, original ones. So, but what you have to do is right click on this gray area in the background and go to additional controls and you're going to do the exact same thing for your user form toolbox. So type E, hit the letter E, go down to EX grid and just click the X right there and hit OK. And it should be the last one on your list. It may have a different icon depending on what version of Excel you have open, but it'll say grid when you hover over it. Then you can again click on that grid from your toolbox and voila, you can click and you'll have that now. So if you open up a user form, now you have a grid on the user form that can easily be closed. All right, as promised, we're going to go over some of the differences between a grid on a sheet versus a grid on a user form. And it's not that hard to understand. Essentially, the grid properties, like the look and the font and things like that, that you can normally edit on a control, the grid properties don't seem to save on a worksheet from when you close it and reopen it. So you have to actually code those things when the sheet is activated or when the workbook is opened or code it to trigger whenever you need that macro to run, whether it's a button click or whatever. Uh, but on a user form, these settings and properties seem to save just fine for the next time the workbook is open. So, you know, less coding is actually needed if you're using the user form version. You also can't use the template editor on a worksheet grid, but this works just fine on a user form grid. I really don't know why that is, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So for example, if you go to design mode, you right click and view the properties, and then you go to custom right here. Uh, this is where you can, on a user form, it works just fine. You can go to this little properties page, and you can click on template, and if you wanted to view, let's say I click on new, this puts a demo of all this Xcode text here. And what that does is it creates this kind of, this is a demonstration of what that might look like on the grid itself. And then if you hit apply or okay, normally that's supposed to work. But if you take it out of design mode, guess what? The grid doesn't refresh. 
No matter what you do, that template editor doesn't seem to work. However, if I go to Alt F11 and go to my user form, I can right click and go to properties and I go to the custom button here. If I view the template now, if I click new and I hit OK, it's going to work just fine as soon as I boot up the user form with F5. There we have that and it's working just fine and I can change this. Uh, actually, I'll just go here. Uh, the other demonstration that they have is with the help button. So let's say I change it to the help button. It has all these images and HTML pictures that it'll toss in there for me. And in fact, let me just make this user form a little bit larger so we can make the grid a little bit larger and we can see the full effect of this really cool helper. All right, cool. So this all this came from the Xcode that they gave us already inside the help button. So this is just another demonstration of how you could do that. But again, using the template editor and all of that a sample Xcode does not work when you're using a worksheet. All right. This is one of the main reasons I really like using the grid control on a user form. I just think it looks cooler and it's easier to move out of the way whenever you're done with it. Uh, I think user forms are profoundly cool and professional and I just don't like to use them on a worksheet, but you certainly may and we're going to show you how to use it both ways. Okay, now I want to tell you about an issue that used to come up. It doesn't really come up any longer, but just to make you aware of something that happens. If you or your end users open up a workbook and you see an error that pops up after you, of course, hit the Enable Macros button and Enable Editing, then it may pop up and say, this workbook is corrupted and it won't work and blah, blah, blah. That is absolutely not true. If you hit OK and simply restart your workbook, it'll be just fine. Nothing is corrupted. It is a weird old grid issue. I think in the newer versions of Xgrid and frankly new versions of Excel it doesn't happen any longer. If you want to absolutely avoid this and avoid the user ever having to click the edit or enable editing enable VBA button you can use the protection software called XLS Padlock wherein you can create full applications and create EXE files in Windows that protect your Excel files and you'll never have those issues but it shouldn't happen anyways let me know in the comments if you ever find that this happens so hopefully this video helped you we'll see you in the next one